Long ago, navigators sailed deep into the heart of the Pacific Ocean and explored every island. For over 4,000 years, they have passed down the secrets of the wind, sea, and stars from one generation to the next. Now only in Micronesia do the last traces of ancient navigator schools survive, and it was here that I came in hopes of witnessing a mysterious rite of passage. As I watched Yurpi the navigator chant to the spirits of the sky world, I couldn't help but think it all seemed impossible. What was I doing in these remote islands, 7,000 miles from my home and family in California, hoping to see him resurrect a ritual that had not been performed in 40 years? For the last two months, Yurpi had been trying to initiate a group of his apprentices in an ancient navigator rite of passage called Po but evil spirits were said to have conspired against it. And now no one knew if the Po ritual would ever happen again. Yuropi is a palu, a traditional navigator teaching his students in a race against time. He is one of a small group of navigators who still understand the words to use with the guardian spirit effigy. And he is the only navigator left who remembers the ancient chance to perform the Po initiation ceremony without which no student may be schooled in the sacred lore of island navigation or be empowered to sail with the spirits of the voyage. For countless generations, navigators have passed down sacred knowledge in Oceania but only in the Western Pacific do ancient schools of navigators still exist and sacred lore is still practiced as it has been for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And it was 12 years ago on the small Micronesian atoll of Lamatrek that I heard about the Po ritual for the first time. Lamatrek is one of the more traditional islands in the Pacific, and it was here that I came 12 years ago to study the culture and make a film about the traditional arts and skills that were still being practiced. On Lamatrek, there was no electricity, telephone, or TV and only one radio to keep in contact with the outside world. Despite its isolation, I felt that the 300 people who lived in the community had a good life. I liked the fact that almost everyone developed a range of talents, from child rearing to the making of medicines and crafts and the performance of songs and dances. It was like looking through a window into the past. I filmed for six months, but my idea to make a movie about traditional arts and skills on Lamatrek had stalled. I had to accept the fact that I couldn't just keep filming and not knowing how the events would be put together. 
My involvement in the island community resulted in a series of images in my mind that I struggled to make whole. The faces of a thousand encounters and the smiles of a hundred unanswered questions, songs for travelers, dances for spirits, chants for fishing and sailing. There seemed to be nothing to connect them, so I stopped filming. But it was not until I gave up the search that I found the answer when I found a friend. When I met Ali, he was one of the most eager to learn persons on Lamatrek. Why Ali chose to be my friend is still something of a mystery to me. I like to think that it was because he was curious about what I was doing on Lamatrek, but it was probably because he liked to drink my coffee. Or maybe it was because I asked the right questions. I don't know. Whatever the reason, Ali was the first one who taught me about traditional island skills. In the beginning, Ali taught me about traditional medicines, how they are made and used. But most importantly, he taught me about their connection to the spirit world, how a formula of secret ingredients is believed to be empowered by a patron spirit when young palm leaves are tied to it. And when the medicine is used, how magical chants can be sung to call upon spirits to make the medicine effective. It was a perspective that dramatically changed my understanding of the events which I had filmed and shaped the ones that I would attempt to document during the rest of my stay. Now I knew that the connection between the spirit world and traditional arts and skills would be the theme of my film. Later, Ali told me about a mysterious rite of passage for navigators called Po. He said that he had never seen the Po ritual, but that he wanted to be in it. I asked him when that might be, and he said that he didn't know because it all depended upon his father, and his father said that Ali wasn't ready yet. A few years later, after I returned to California, I heard that Ali moved to Yap, which is a modern island port of call about 600 miles from Lamatrek. Ali got a job as a policeman to earn money for his family and to send his children to school. Uh, 1020 uh, down at the hospital, Pier 99. Uh, 6-8, I have come to where the chain is and it was unlocked. So I decided to come down to the pier and check and everything is still okay here. Uh, Hi. Uh, 10897 uh, to the next beat work. Ali and I kept in contact over the years, and I visited him to get more information about traditional island skills. After spending eight years living and working in Yap, Ali had tasted the so-called good life, but he missed his home island of Lamatrek and the days when he used to sail between the islands. It was during this time I learned that Ali's father, Europe, was the only navigator left who remembered the sacred chants for conducting the Po ceremony since it was last performed in the 1950s. If Europe didn't do it, no one else could, and the Po ritual in its ancient form would be lost forever. When Ali and I went to talk with Europe, we suggested that the Po ritual should be filmed for future generations. Europe surprised both of us by saying, how soon do you want to do it? We all agreed in nine months, Ali and I would leave Yap on the inner island trading ship to meet Europe on Lamatrek, where he would be waiting for us. Yeah, 
Jadi makan mana boleh, aku faham mana makan ibu kita ni apa boleh. Harap butuh orang itu, le, po, itu yang tu Amerika ni tu ada, tu ada orang pernah, tu orang pernah ni, ibu telah kita orang macam tu, orang orang nak kerja orang, tu ada fasa itu ibu, itu orang sekitar tu mana kerja orang, ibu kerja orang ni kerja tu ada, tu ada, tak boleh boleh. For Ali and a few other apprentice navigators, this was a moment they thought would never come. For them, there could be no other choice but to join their teacher, Europe, to be initiated in the pose ceremony. The ship follows a route called the Long Field Trip so named because it sometimes takes as long as a month for the ship to make a tour of the outer islands of Yap. In its travels, the ship covers nearly a thousand miles of open ocean, going from one island to the next before coming to Lamatrek. Lamatrek is one of the most distant islands within the ship's outer island circuit and one of the most remote atolls in the Caroline Islands. With every stopover at an island, the ship spends the day discharging passengers and goods and picking up new travelers and cargo before departing for its next destination. Ali and I developed a routine of asking the navigators who got aboard to tell us what they knew about the initiation rituals that used to be practiced in these islands. What is Po? When we asked about it, only the oldest navigators we spoke to knew anything about it. But even they were uncertain because they had never seen it. After more than a week at sea, the islands began to blend into one another. I knew the journey was long since I had been this way three times before, but I have never gotten used to how really far it is to Lamatrek.
how long ago it seems when I first was there. I remember living in a tiny palm leaf hut at the far north end of the island. And I remember the day Magua and Tilamai came to my hut to show me a dance to an island spirit named Ilafilamar. It was a dance which they said they were the last ones to know. And I remember the women who danced and sent me food. Those days of white hot oceans and boys fishing from the shore. And I remember Ali reading the future in palm leaves. Do you remember the questions that we asked the leaves of Bois? What was in those knots, Ali, that has bound our lives together, sailing to faraway islands? How many voyages did we make to Olamorau? And how many turtles did we catch? Now our search has taken us wider and deeper than we could ever possibly have imagined then. And always there is the ocean the mystery of the navigators of old who sailed on it, and what it means to be Poe. After 10 days at sea, we finally reached Lamatrek, and Europe called a meeting to discuss the post ceremony. The last post ceremony to take place on Lamatrek happened such a long time ago that it was Europe's grandfather Salfa who came 40 miles from the neighboring island of Satawal to perform it. Salfa came to Lamatrek when Ali's grandmother was a young woman sometime in the late 1920s. I'm ready because I'm ready to go to Lamatrek. 
Barang saya dah pipi Barang di poli cari Benda sendiri Saya dah pipi hari Tak ada pok Tahu pok Itu apa di rumah dekat rasa dulu Ya, ya ada Tak ada kalau sana Tapi ada pok di hari Renan ni mayang Kalau cari yang hangat Tahu pok hangat juga Ya ada pok So Ya ada pok Baik Tiga aja, orang ada hotel lagi dia, ada nak kata dia tadi wayang, dia berada tepat itu, orang dia dia tak wayang, itu pun ada dia cari sendiri. Now, some sixty years later, Ali's mother takes care of the family household and tends the family hearth. And it was about 40 years ago that Yuripi came to Lamatrek from Sadawal to marry her and raise a family. So it may be said that Yuripi, like his grandfather Safa before him, brings the tradition of the Po ceremony from Sadawal to Lamatrek. The Po ritual is not commonly known on Lamatrek because the navigators here had a similar ritual, which they called Chokpai. But the Chokpai ceremony has since died out on Lamatrek as it has elsewhere in the islands. Only the Po rite of passage may be saved from obscurity, and its resurrection all depends on Europe. Mawari itu, hari tu kita baru cepai wajib tapi juga ada udang kau, kalau cepai pay pay dah usah wajib umur ni juga itu kita. Ia mahu kita buat, ia kita buat cepai. Ia dah usah kita buat pasca bersama. Ia mahu buat lima cepai. Mula mahu ia ni Per After the meeting discussing the Po ritual was over, Yuripi asked that a special large bull be made for the initiation. But the Po ceremony would not happen soon. There were several work projects taking place on the island that needed to be completed first, such as the rethatching of roofs. This is a job that needs to be done every couple of years or so depending on the severity of the storms that strike Lamatrek. Then there was the building of a new house frame making use of modern construction techniques with reinforced concrete.
and largest of all was the renovation of the elementary school, including the construction of a new basketball court. During these cooperative work projects, the entire community participated, including Europe, even though he is 80 some years old. Since the school project was such a large cooperative effort, several families gathered together to pound taro root to make food for the workers. When the work got too tedious, someone decided to break the monotony by pretending to be a ghost, which made everyone laugh except the small children who thought the toy doll mask that was being worn was real. In the early 1950s, the Lamentrek community converted to Christianity, but a belief in island ghosts and spirits still survives in various degrees and forms as superstitions. Traditionally, the spirit world played an active part in all aspects of island life, and this became all too apparent when a freak accident occurred one day on the uninhabited island across the lagoon. Martin was one of the apprentice navigators who was to be initiated in the post ceremony. But he was severely injured when he fell 40 feet from a coconut tree. He suffered multiple fractures to his lower spine and a dislocated hip. But everyone agreed that he was lucky to be alive. And he was even more fortunate to have the services of an expert in massage healing techniques and her apprentices who could put him back together again. All work projects on the island were immediately put on hold, and the great fear that was being circulated amongst the community was that malevolent spirits had caused Martin's accident because of Europe's intention to perform the post ceremony. Specially knotted young palm leaves were hung on trees around the house where Martin lay placing the area under a taboo that was designed to aid his recovery. We hoped and waited, not knowing what would happen next. The post-ceremony, for the time being, was on hold. I could tell that Europe did not want to talk about it. He did not react one way or the other to any of the gossip that was circulating around the island. He seemed somehow above it all, and bided his time making a special navigator's hat out of young palm leaves that he said was used for magic in the old days, to call upon the spirits of navigation for protection. Meanwhile, at the request of several young men, Ali was teaching marching exercises, drills that Ali had learned when he was at the police academy. Rear, march. <laughs> left, left, left. Rear, march. Left, right, 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 left. Rear, march
March. As the days of waiting wore on, I couldn't help but think that the Po ritual was never going to happen. The old ways of doing things on Lamatrek were rapidly disappearing. Now men regularly went fishing using motorboats instead of sailing canoes. Twelve years ago it was different. I remember Ali waking me up before dawn, and we would go sailing to get to the fishing grounds outside the reef by sunrise. That's how Ali and I got to know each other, going for a bonito and yellowfin tuna, looking for the flocks of birds to tell us where the fish were biting. And that's how I met Ali's father, Europe. In those days, Europe always wore a blue knit cap whenever he went sailing, but he was only able to help steer the canoe because he had cataracts and couldn't see very well. A few years later, Europe would have eye surgery on Guam to restore his vision but would always need glasses to see properly. How did they do it, I wonder? Those navigators of old, voyaging thousands of miles across the ocean to find a tiny island under a special star. Long ago before the time of Christ, Navigators were making long-distance trading voyages in the islands surrounding Lamatrek. At the beginning of the century, no less than 25 separate schools of navigational knowledge existed in the central Caroline Islands. In the last 90 years, however, the navigators representing these schools have all but vanished as one by one they ceased to initiate and train new members to replace those who had died. Today, only the Palu, the traditional navigators from the schools of Weriang and Falush remain. Now when the guardian spirit of the voyage, Yalulawe, looks out over the ocean he sees only the schools of Weriang and Falush under his command. And I wonder if a new generation of Palu will follow, or will it all end here? <laughs> One of the major prerequisites for becoming a navigator is good seamanship and a working knowledge of sailing canoes. In addition, special respect must be shown and services rendered to a master navigator in order to become an apprentice and learn navigational knowledge, which is called kapitala metau, meaning the talk of the sea. Once accepted, the master-apprentice relationship focuses on the teaching of basic navigational techniques, but advanced techniques and sacred lore can only be taught after a student has proven himself worthy and been initiated in the post ceremony. <laughs> This crew has been learning sailing skills since they were about 10 years old and studying navigational techniques since they were 17 or 18. But since they have never been initiated in Po, they know little, if anything, about the sacred chants that have empowered navigators since time immemorial to voyage upon the open seas. <laughs> With such chants, Europe calls upon the spirit powers belonging to his school of navigation, the school of Weriang, because it is said that the ancestor spirit of Weriang is one with the spirits of the voyage.
a month and a half into our stay and we are still waiting for Poe. Ali says that there still has not been any positive sign on the island since Martin's accident. If anything, with time dragging on, the chances of Poe taking place are becoming less likely with each passing day. We try to occupy our spare time with simple tasks and not think about it. The only constant in our lives these days seems to be the late afternoon custom of gathering in a drinking circle to sample the morning's collection of palm wine. By all his actions, Yuripi conveys a sense of patience and forbearance, as if to tell us not to lose heart. And like everyone else, I endeavor not to show my concern. The only other person alive on Lamatrek, known to have conducted an initiation ritual like the post ceremony, is the oldest man on the island. Tirupo lives in a small house with his wife and grandchildren, but has been in frail health for a number of years. When we met each other 12 years ago, Tirupo told me that he didn't know his true age, but that he remembered being a small child when the great typhoon of 1907 struck Lamatrek. In 1949, he conducted the last initiation ritual and school for traditional weathermen, who were called Wauch, and graduated 17 students. Twelve years ago, Tirupo remembered a great deal more. At that time, he told me about the skills and responsibilities that Wauch weathermen practiced on Lamatrek in the old days, and he demonstrated the chants that his students had to learn. Sacred chants that called upon the spirit powers of his school of weather control, called Yaranoch, to protect the island. What the Palu navigator is to the ocean, the Wauch weatherman is to the island. His main job was to perform magical rites that were believed to prevent strong winds from ruining the breadfruit harvest. But he was also responsible for protecting the island from destructive storms and typhoons. Now Tirupo alone remembers the magic words and dance for initiating new members into the Yaranoch School of Weather Control. When he is gone, the initiation rite and the ancient knowledge of island weathermen will belong only to the spirits of Lamatrek past.
Two weeks later, something amazing happens. Two different women on Lamatrek give birth within an hour of each other. And one of the new mothers is Europe's youngest daughter. The births are interpreted by the community as a sign that the malevolent spirits which have been looming over the island have finally left. Now, after two months of waiting for Poe, Europe is free to act. Using a palm frond, Europe measures the ground to make an earth oven to cook the breadfruit for the post ceremony. Then, taking a ceremonial stick, he opens the earth. With this symbolic act, Europe officially infuses the site with spiritual power, and he assumes the title of Tao Po, Master of Po. All the able-bodied men in the community come to help prepare the breadfruit for the earth oven. After the pit is excavated, Europe receives the logs that will be used to fire the earth oven. He receives the logs from an assistant named Togume, who in turn gets them from the initiates. As Europe's first assistant, Togume carries the title of Peshalapalu, which means legs of the navigator. Togume will be Europe's right hand man for the Po initiation ceremony and the formal schooling that follows. Togume is also a Palu from Sarawa with marriage ties to Lamatrek and has the distinction of being the only other person on Lamatrek besides Europe who has been initiated in the post ceremony. Meanwhile, the women watch from a distance. They too have their own earth oven, but it is used to cook taro, not breadfruit. <laughs> Europe ceremoniously opens the earth oven and lets the other men spread out the hot coals. After the bed of coals is prepared, baskets of breadfruit are emptied onto taro leaves and then covered.
after the food is cooked, the men pound the breadfruit and the women pound the taro. Then the food will form two layers in the ceremonial bowl, with the breadfruit on the bottom and the taro on the top. While Europe tends to the bowl of food for the ceremony, men congregate to form a drinking circle outside Faltebu Canoe House. This will be the last opportunity for them to socialize together, because for the next four days, Faltebu Canoe House and the immediate area surrounding it will be taboo to everyone who is not involved with the schooling of the initiates. <laughs> For generations, Palu have been at this crossroads. When an initiate enters the post ceremony, he moves from the physical world to a world of magic. Now he will be in the presence of spirit powers unknown to common men. He will receive the arts and skills that according to ancient tradition were taught by the gods and handed down from generation to generation. And now he will acquire the sacred power and the right to voyage to faraway islands. Early in the morning, Europe sets up four taboo markers around the perimeter of Faltebu Canoe House. In so doing, he makes the site taboo to all those not participating in the Po rite of passage. For four days and nights, the initiates will observe special taboos. They may not drink water, but only coconuts, as if they are sailing on a canoe at sea. Likewise, they can only bathe in the salt water of the lagoon and must not leave the site to have contact with anyone outside of the school. Togume collects the woven lava lavas called tour, which are given by the families of the initiates to pay Europe for his services as schoolmaster. A total of 274 tour have been given. In the old days, Europe told us it was not uncommon for a thousand tour to be given. <laughs> In preparation for the ceremony, the initiates are decorated with flower garlands, jewelry, and an orangish red turmeric cosmetic. In addition to Ali Halialur, four other navigator apprentices are to be initiated Xavier Yarafaliang, Robert Yurailu, Ambrose Yangarelamal, and Carlos Yarofarech. While Europe prepares the ceremonial bowl, 
his navigator assistants, Togume and Yarfalogwa, sort the tour which will be used to cover the bowl as the assembled community looks on. As a symbol of his rank, and in keeping with the sanctity of Po, Yuropi wears a frigate bird feather on his head to convey the spiritual connection between navigational knowledge and the deities in the sky world. After the bull is covered, the stage will be set for Yuropi to perform the rite of enlightenment, which is intended to open the minds and hearts of each apprentice before he comes up to the bull one by one to receive the young palm leaf bracelet that will signify his new status as a palu. After the young palm leaf bracelet is tied to the wrist of each initiate, a magical amulet is tied next to it. This protective charm is to be worn by a palu when he captains his first voyage. After Europe finishes the initiation rites, he prepares to uncover the bowl. After all 274 tour are removed, the bull is charged with magical power and must be addressed with the utmost respect before Europe can touch the bull to call forth the spirits of the school of Wariang. Yeah. 
The first share of Navigator food goes to the newly initiated Palu and contains a black mother of pearl shell that has been sanctified with a young palm leaf decoration. Europe then proceeds to distribute the rest of the ceremonial food. According to ancient custom, the Taupo calls out the names of 12 schools of Palu to receive their shares of ceremonial food. Traditionally, the 12 schools were called in order of their rank, and even though a school may not be present, the name of the school is still announced out of respect to its founding teacher spirit. Yuropi told us that during his grandfather's time, Navigators from these schools would be encountered in trading networks in different island regions, from the Palau Islands in the west, 3,000 miles across Micronesia, to the Marshall Islands in the east. Nearly all of these schools have disappeared, never to voyage again. But their names live on in the post-ceremony, kept in Europe's memory as spoken testimony to a great race of seafarers that once roamed the Pacific. Later that afternoon, Europe wastes no time starting school. In recognition of their new status, Europe gives his students the title of POFU, which means newly initiated navigator. Instruction in navigational knowledge, or capital metal, the talk of the sea starts by testing the Pofu's knowledge of astronomy. Thirty-two pieces of coral are laid out in a circle to form a star compass. 
The positions of the stars form a system of reference points that are used for organizing information about winds, wave patterns, currents, the relative positions of islands, reefs, and other sea marks. The star compass must be committed to memory in order to learn the correct courses to follow between the islands. For this purpose, each student recites a series of exercises designed to enable him to orient himself at sea any time when the stars are visible and when they are not. In the early hours before sunrise, Togume leaves Faltugu to go into the interior of the island to collect the ingredients to make the medicine of enlightenment, which will be given each morning to the Pofa. At the break of dawn, the pofu take a bath in the lagoon while Europe grinds coconut for them. The grated coconut is used as a cleansing and moisturizing agent to counteract the saltwater effects of the ocean. Europe performs this service in accordance with the po custom that teachers and assistants do all of the physical work so that the pofu will concentrate as much as they can on learning to be a palu. Europe teaches the Pofa how to make the palm leaf bracelets that were used for their initiation. The bracelets they make will be used later on to release them from taboos associated with eating certain kinds of fish that are said to belong to the guardian spirit of the voyage, Yalulawe. So 
disorder. After Togome returns with the medicine of enlightenment, Yurupi prepares each student by performing the same rite of enlightenment that he gave them during the post ceremony. The purpose of this rite and the medicine they receive is to help them understand and remember the information that he is going to teach them. The entire morning was spent learning the star courses between the islands in the vicinity of Lamatrek. And once the Pofa felt confident that they had memorized them, they went back to learning the chants that Europe had performed in the post-ceremony. A routine was established whereby Europe would recite a chant and then the POFA would ask questions. In the past, this interaction would have taken place without reading or writing, much less the use of tape recording equipment. Written communication was virtually unknown in these islands until the beginning of this century, and all instruction in these islands was traditionally by word of mouth and rote demonstration up until the mid-1960s, when these students attended the first modern school system established in these islands. Europe delivers fish to the women that are cooking food for the school. After the fish is prepared, the pofu will learn how to remove the taboo of eating it. Food taboos form an important part of the curriculum of instruction in the school of Weriang because they are linked to the spirit powers of navigation. Europe told us that once when he was making a voyage, he laid a special fish on the outrigger platform as an offering to the guardian spirit, Yaluluwe. 
After a voyage is completed, it is possible to remove the taboos on several different kinds of fish that are held sacred in the school of Weiriang. But the palm leaf bracelet rite has to be performed for this purpose. To remove the taboo for each student, Europe repeats the same palm leaf bracelet rite he performed for them in the Po ceremony. But this time, he uses the bracelets which the Pofo have learned to make earlier in the morning. In the old lore, it was considered a serious offense if a Palu disregarded the fish taboo. A Palu who did so was thought to receive swift punishment from the guardian spirit Yalulue in the form of navigational errors and sickness. Europe tells the Pofa that he wants them to listen to one more chant before they go to sleep for the night. And if they want him to, he will teach it to them tomorrow. It is a powerful chant called Sumatau, meaning to open the sea. It is a chant of last resort that is recited when a Palu is lost to call upon the spirits of navigation to help him find land. <laughs> Europe devotes the entire next day to teaching the Sumatau chant. I'm <laughs> 
Yurpi rises at the break of dawn to gather palm leaves and close the earth oven that was made to cook the breadfruit for the post ceremony. As he arranges the palm leaves, he chants a short prayer of thanks to the spirits who may still be dwelling there. With the earth oven covered, the time has come for the last day of instruction and the graduation of the initiates. Before class, the pofa use a walkie-talkie to catch up on some news from the outside, knowing that they will soon be released from the taboos which have kept them confined to Faldevu for the last four days. Their wrists are heavy now with palm leaf bracelets, symbols of the lessons they have learned and a visible sign that they are nearly graduated from the school of Werdiang. Once they return to their lives in the community, I can't help but wonder if they will pass the Po ritual down to the next generation. Can the influences of modernization and technology be reconciled with the traditions of the past? No one can say, but the search for a balance has a magic all its own. It is life in quest of life, the knowing and the unknown, the stepping stone of wonder that will take the children of tomorrow to a place where the past meets the future, a place that only they can discover. Late in the afternoon, Yurpi has one last rite to perform for the pofa. As he steps forward, he looks towards the elementary school across the way and the children on the playground. He hesitates, obviously concerned that the children are too close to the taboo markers, too close to the spirit powers of navigation. Apparently satisfied that the children are keeping at a safe distance, Yurupi approaches the palm tree that he is giving to the graduates of the school of Weriang to be their preserve, their place of spiritual power. From this moment on, the tree and all its resources will belong to them. It will be their place to make offerings to the spirits of the voyage, to Yaluluwe, to Weriang, and to all the teacher spirits who have held knowledge of Kapitala Metau the talk of the sea.
Yurupi and Togume wrap a circle of young coconut leaves around the tree to make it taboo to everyone except the members of the school of Werian. Between the circle and the tree, they place the leaves of lel and the specially knotted palm leaves called yalulab, which are named for the great spirit in the sky world, who in traditional lore is thought of as the highest deity and the source of all intelligence and wisdom. Now Ali is a palu. For the first time in the Po ritual, Ali and the other graduates may eat with Yuripi. Before, it was taboo, but now they may take their rightful place in the company of other navigators. In recognition of their new status, a final feast of offering is made to give thanks to the spirits of Po and to the knowledge that has been given and to the knowledge that has been received. With this thanks, the Po taboos are lifted and they are free to go home. Yuripi takes the ceremonial bowl to be washed in the lagoon. And with this final act, the rites of Po are ended. I came to Lamatrek in search of a dream, to look through a window into the past and to see how the navigators of old handed down their ancient wisdom. My journey has come to an end, but for Ali and the other graduates of Po, a new journey awaits. To be a full-fledged Palu, each one must now prove that he can captain a sailing canoe to an uninhabited island far from Lamatrek. Until they are ready, they may continue to learn from Europe. Then, when the wind is right, chart a course for an island under a special star and chant a prayer to the spirits of the voyage. <laughs>